You know how there's like coastal grandmother? Do you think there's like, there's like gator grandma? Like. There can be. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I look like I'm, I'm about to go into a swamp. Like a swamp boardwalk hike. I feel like you look like you're about to go see some dinosaurs. Hell yeah. No, it's gonna be a great hike when Brittany remembers the poop shovel. Poop shovel. I have not pooped today, have you? No. We woke up at like 5 a.m. to get here. Dangerous. Trail condition says that the bugs are pretty bad, so we picked up some bug bands at a gas station on the way over here. So we are on a three-day backpacking trip to Royal Basin in the Olympic National forest region on the peninsula about a three hour drive from Seattle. Took the Prius down a like 10 mile road on dirt road which was actually pretty nice. Uh, pretty smooth through a lot of it so that was really excellent. There are campsites along the trail to get to the end of the lake where our final destination camping is but we'll be taking two days to get there. Today we're doing most of the hiking doing six out of the seven ish miles to get there which is perfect because tomorrow morning we'll be able to wake up pack up and then head to the lake where campsites there are first come first serve. We've been out in nature for what? 10 minutes and I already feel dirty. <laughs> sure. Smooth. She heavy. Oh, beautiful. I finally did it. Yay. Hell yeah. Actually with like a proper sized backpack. I didn't realize how small my backpack was until watching the footage back. It's like it's small. Baby's first backpack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, feels nice to actually be carrying stuff for everyone. God. Have you heard about summer snow? When it falls on you, your blood runs cold. Don't you sweat your pretty skin? It melts away for it sinks in And you dream about this very night When the moon runs down the summer sky Could it be the morning of the spring When the sea runs dry we start to sing Have you heard from the sky All about it Down the river Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am Here, look at it go listen. That's good and cold. Oh! <laughs> Refreshing. <laughs> A gift. <laughs> Looks promising. I like it. How sweaty I am. Jeez. I look like I just got my head dunked underwater. <laughs> I come to you in the safety of my tent and sweating. <laughs> also, my face is burning. I got some of the uh, 
the jungle juice like bug repellent on my face and now it's a little tingly numb we made it to the meadow and the last mile mile and a half was pretty strenuous uphill i was dying and then of course just before we get to the campground and to the meadows um Brittany and I were kind of, mostly Brittany, were swarmed by bees and giant horse flies. And so we had to rush, build our tents to kind of hide away from safety. Brittany had read on one of the trail reviews that uh, the bugs were pretty bad and that they kind of hung out in their tent the whole time. So we were hoping for better luck. The lake is less than a mile from here. And we heard that there, the, you know, it was a dream up there was the quote that there weren't really much bugs. So we're hoping for that for tomorrow, but we'll have to play that by ear. <laughs> I do have one little bug trapped in here with me, but he's not a bee or anything, but yeah. Brittany and I panic, ran around and tried to whack them. She got, she hit me good and got one that was like landed on me, spooked me, but she got him. So that's all that mattered. I need some time to recoup. I'm going to blow up my air mattress slash sleeping pad, you know. Oh. Boy. You can't get in. There's nothing here for you. The scenery around here is gorgeous. When we first walked into the meadow, there was a bunch of really beautiful flowers, and I wanted to just sit down and take off my shoes and put on my, like, camp sandals, and no. No time for hanging out in the beautiful meadow. Maybe in a little bit. Do you think the bugs are bad because it's like dusk? I'm really hoping that like come nightfall we'll only have to worry about like mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the deer wandered onto our camp. It's over uh, behind these here trees. finally noticed us. Good morning, it is day two. Our campsite is actually on a game trail, which was kind of a little concerning since we are by this little patch of water. Um, but yeah, there's the game trail that kind of goes through there. We just kind of popped into the first campsite, so I don't know if any of the other campsites have game trails on them as well, but a little concerning, but I don't think we had any visitors throughout the night. So that was very, very comforting. Besides the deer, uh, you know, at dusk um no other little visitors so now it's time to go fetch the bear can and make some breakfast
guys. And as you can tell, I'm no longer out in the wilderness. I'm at home. I'm enjoying a week old, not very good to start off with, a glass of Sauve Blanc. Let's talk about failure. <laughs> The initial plan for this trip was to go uh, on a two-day backpacking trip. Previously, I've never done more than one night backpacking. Um, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, I've only done two trips. Both of them I have vlogs for. Barclay Lake, which was a couple weeks ago, and then Snow slash Gen Lake, which was a couple years ago, where we would hike out, stay the one night, and then pack up and uh, head home. So to get to Royal Basins, you have Basin Lake, and then there's also the basin of the mountain that you can go to. To get to the campground where the lake is, that's about seven-ish miles, and then there's an additional one mile to the basin. The plan that I think we kind of thought was what was going to happen was there are a couple of campgrounds throughout the hike to get to the lake um, and one being about three miles in and then the second one being about another three miles in. So we initially thought that it was going to take us two days to get up to the lake with it being a one three mile day and a four mile day. Brittany believes that that's what we wanted to do but just the uh, permits didn't align and we had our campsite at the six mile campsite. This was my first time really using such a big bag and I'm not sure I would love to know how heavy it is, um, but it is a lot of weight, of course, taking two days worth of things um, out and about. I was carrying the bear can, Brittany was carrying cooking supplies, so, and my, my camera gear, so pretty heavy. The first probably four miles of the hike is really flat, but then the last mile and a half, two miles is incredibly uphill and steep. For reference, that first four miles took us about, um, I don't know, three hours to get through. Um, whereas that last mile and a half of just really terrible incline took me uh, over two hours, three hours, I think. I think we left the first camp at uh, three and then we didn't get up to our camp two miles later until like after six o'clock. So pretty strenuous. I was, <laughs> I really can't do uphills. It's something that I really need to work on in terms of my stamina and abilities. Um, but I was getting terribly crampy going up those hills. It was so painful. Um, yeah, I, it was so, it was so bizarre and it felt like period cramps, but I, I was not expecting to have a menstrual cycle on this trip with the bag kind of strapped around the stomach it kind of digs in and so I had to stop a lot there was a section kind of towards the beginning of the incline where I really was just like I don't know if I can do this I really want to turn around I didn't mention anything because I would feel terrible about canceling a trip like this so soon um, but I've never felt that about a hike <laughs> getting up there was quite the challenge and it just felt like it never ended and it was completely uphill the entire time and then of course once we got to camp instead of just being able to relax and, un and depack and take in a moment to gather ourselves Brittany was attacked by a swarm of bees and horseflies and we literally spent like 10 minutes at least just running around camp she was trying to whack them um, and then we put on more DEET and I think the horse flies like the DEET a lot more because they weren't bothering me until I put on more bug repellent and then they were on me so we had to quickly like make our tents and it was just so hectic. So that night I told her I said you know like my spirit about this is so um, killed right now if, if, if I'm really feeling like this tomorrow like I don't want to continue. Brittany wore shoes that really gave her some like intense blisters and so her feet were wrecked. In the morning I woke up and I did start my period and I had zero supplies for it because I really was not expecting it for a long time. I have suffered from very painful aggressive periods my whole life and to be out in the middle of nowhere and in just uncovered heat because our campsite was going to be just in this open field so no shade potential of bugs really no pain medicine and no proper hygiene products um i just said i really i can't go on i can't do this um we got to turn back my little first aid kit had acetaminophen in it the only thing that really helps my pain sometimes is a mitral complete um, and so and that only works like half the time as well so i just was so afraid of being in pain and uh suffering in the middle of nowhere 
and especially from the feelings that I had going up the hill, I couldn't imagine continuing the trek. We thought about maybe just packing up our stuff and then hiking up to the lake and back. It's 0.7 miles from the meadows that we camped at, but it would have been a 500 feet elevation gain, which would have been again very steep. And since the cramps were really rocking and rolling, I was like, I can't do that. So we decided to cancel and make our way all the way back. We walked the six miles and Brittany's feet were horrendous. My cramps were terrible going down the mountain as well. Once we got to flat ground and we had some caffeine goos and candies, I felt a little bit better. But poor Brittany's feet were destroyed. I also was immensely attacked by bug bites. Um, I'll put a picture here of some of the of my arms. It was just wild. Um, I don't know if they were all just from the way back or or whatnot, but I was definitely bug food. Uh, so not very, very fun. When we got to camp on the first night, the only night, Brittany was like, this is kind of like the first time I've ever thought like why do I do this you know it was so miserable it was so hot the hike up was terrible with our heavy packs on being attacked by bugs was merciless and then the fear of being right on a well-traveled game trail it took me a long time to kind of make the finalization that I didn't want to even go to the lake or stay an extra night because I felt so much you know shame for quitting like having my body be a reason to quit because it's just not able to do these things. It's not a very good feeling. We had planned this trip months in advance. This was an area on Brittany's bucket list I knew she was really excited about. Um, so it just seemed like I was really letting her down in a way. Brittany and I do a lot of traveling together and she has seen, and you know, we hang out all the time, and she has seen just kind of how painful and, um, you know, difficult it is for me to do physical things and to travel while on my period. I always have like a difficult time with, you know, does, can the body be pushed more or do I need rest? Like trying to find that line of, it's, you're just telling yourself, no, 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 um, versus, or no, you really should rest. You really should take a step back. It's difficult for me to kind of navigate that line. But I ultimately just thought about like, I'm out here to have fun and a lot of yesterday was nice, but a lot of it wasn't fun. And if it were gonna go down this line, there's an option, there's a, a high probability that it's just not gonna be fun anymore. So we made our way back to the car and her and I talked a lot about it. And she was also concerned that um, this experience would ruin me from backpacking. And she's like, oh no, I feel so bad. Like Diana's never gonna wanna backpack with me again. And I was like, I feel the opposite. I feel like you won't invite me again because I bailed. Now it seemed like we were kind of on the same page. Her feet were wrecked. And she thinks that if we would have stayed the extra day, done those extra miles and in incline. And even though we would have gotten one night of sleep, I think it would have just destroyed her feet. She said like the last like 20 minutes of the hike back, she was nearly to the point of crawling. Her feet were hurting that much. It doesn't feel good to, to fail. It doesn't feel good to quit, but I think it's also important um, because, you know, it's been two days at this point and I'm very glad that I made this decision. I did the next day have a very painful and difficult period that would have been insufferable out on the trail. And Brittany and I have not really been able to walk around our own houses. I, the stairs kill me, you know, so uh, we both have been like, we were really glad that we canceled. It sucks, but we're really glad that we made that decision. I don't know, I just wanted to share this as a uh, experience. I thought about scrapping the whole vlog, but uh, I think it was a, it's important to see that sometimes things don't go as planned. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know about a time where you failed or you listened to your, you know, your body or, you know, you felt the, the same way that I have in this. I would really love to hear some stories about that down below. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one and make sure you always get home safely. Bye guys. Seem to be a you ran until your legs gave way. Then you cried and got back up again. And it's real to think that I could fly Cross a broken bridge in the fading light Never thought ahead of my two feet Never had a care in the world you see